Okay, hello. I'm going to continue with the OS dev here. Been a while, but that's all right. It's been so long, I got another Linux distro with newer versions of things, and stuff doesn't compile anymore. So I'm going to try to have this <laughs> video be having stuff compile on uh, Linux for newer versions of Clang and GCC. Hopefully I can get it to work under both. I'm not sure if I want to mess with LD versus LLD, but I should have both, I think. At this point, yeah, compatible with GNU linkers. Okay, we'll see, you know, the issues that I got here for whatever the latest version of the OS is from the Git repo, and uh, we'll see what we can do to get it to boot and, and work with both. Because I know before it wasn't working under GCC anyway, because I need a uh, general regs only or no general regs only for some ISR code, interrupt service routines, and, you know, I'll have to take out floats probably from the graphics.h file as well, because x87 doesn't work for GCC for some things, so yeah, uh, we'll mess with that. But right now it's all linker issues, so global offset tables, that comes from PIE, Position Independent Executable. So uh, I guess we'll take that out, <laughs> fortunately or ununfort unfortunately. I am doing OS, which is some optimizations, which may be messing with some things, I don't know. Right now I'll just get it to compile and maybe boot or not. So if I take that out, does anything happen? We still have the same references there. And it does leave .o files, so I'm actually gonna add that to here as well and take out these comments. I don't need all those cramp in my style. We don't need them there anymore. Okay, so when I remove stuff, well, I am removing .o right there, but I guess it doesn't get to that point because of the linker. Uh, okay, so never mind. I don't, I don't need that in there then. That'll be removed when it gets removed. Okay, so global offset table doesn't work. Um, we'll probably have to explicitly put no no pie, no pie for you, no pumpkin pie, no uh, you know raspberry pie, whatever you like. I do like some blackberry. I three eighty six of input files incompatible with I three eighty six x eighty six sixty four. Okay, so the linker says we want thirty two bit essentially, not sixty four bit. And that's fair because I'm compiling 432 bit with my C flags for the dash M32 here. So that does make sense. But we'll just set, uh, hey, linker, we need to explicitly say, I need I386. Is that all you do? I think it, it might be underscore elf. I don't remember exactly. I know there's a way to tell it what machines it works. Is it like dash M? It'll tell me if I get it wrong, right? Okay. So elf i386 that's probably what i need to do if you're on windows you might have to do pe files with that but i'm not so we'll try this we'll try that and see where we go with the linker here just mess that up okay there we go there's the x87 stuff 8387 things in the exception handlers in the interrupts those are not allowed in an interrupt service routine. So that happens because I'm compiling things together and uh, I don't have my files separated right. Um, but the ISR code and everything else is lumped together in the kernel and stuff or whatever uses it. And ultimately there's some floating point values or instructions being inserted somewhere along with the files that have the interrupt service routine code in. Uh, GCC particularly doesn't like that. These are not allowed. We need general rigs only in the C flags, and that will break some other things that reference floating point, but that is all right. So I'm gonna add it to the C flags here. We're gonna do general rigs only, at least for this kernel code. Later we could have something and say, this could be like kernel C flags, and we could have like user C flags later for stuff that would use floating point above the kernel, or at least non ISR related code, but that would be later on possibly. I'll add some uh, a CC as well. Let's say we're gonna do GCC for now, but I'll add something in for Clang so we can test with that later. That way this CC value will be filled out when we compile our C files. Okay, we'll try this with general rigs only and get some other errors here. So yeah, we have references to floats, which is why it was compiling in 8387 instructions. And that's not gonna work, so that's in the calculator. Under draw ellipse, okay. I'm getting 2D graphics.h, which I think is the only part where I have draw ellipse, and in convert color. I would have to take out where it references floating point things. 
but just to make sure if we go in here, yeah, I am including this probably for colors or other reasons. I'm not sure why I'm including that actually. Maybe to the frame buffer and I have to draw things. That could be it. Otherwise, I'm not sure why I have that um, in the calculator. But that's all right. Those are both going to be in include graphics, 2D graphics.h. So in here, convert color was one. That's at the bottom. And that is because, yeah, I'm using 255.0 here. But I guess we could bite the bullet and just have it be less accurate. <laughs> just do 255 or FF for converting these things. So that should get rid of some of those. Yeah. But still, the draw ellipse functions are there. So uh, I could punt that off until later and say that's probably due to round right here, which has 0.5. That's in draw ellipse. Yeah, that's the only part where I'm referencing those. Um, we can say we're not going to call draw ellipse, I guess, or compile it in. We won't have ellipses for a while until I figure out how to how to fudge that with integers. So taking out features is not good. But that's what I'm doing right now. Put this back in later using non floating point values round if possible. I like that round was uh, still highlighted there. So what else uses that? I think fill ellipse also. Yeah. Uses that. So go back to draw, pick up that to do, go back here and let's put that under there. All right. Hopefully these files are easier to read on like smaller devices now. I took advice from a, a bird person over that. So there's about 35 lines on a screen. If this is still too small, let me know. I can increase the font more. But yeah, so hopefully that's big enough at about 34, 35 lines for a screen. But okay, so I do want it to be easier to read for people. Okay, we get an interrupt thing now. Kernel main implicit declaration. Did you mean draw line? Yes. We're referencing that within kernel when we're doing eclipse. Add back in later when no floating point. And this will be on fill ellipse as well. Okay. Okay. So then we have issues with GCC, not claim, but GCC does not like interrupt and naked attributes at the same time. So if you're doing all inline assembly, uh, for this case, in the syscall dispatcher, it does not want interrupt with it. Although I needed that to specify an interrupt function signature taking in the, the interrupt frame there, but sure, okay. So that's at the bottom here, all the way at the bottom. So here, it does not like this with interrupt, all right. Um, I think we can still take in an int frame and that's okay, even though I'm not using it. I think that's all right. Standard O.h no file. And make disk. No file, you say. What do you mean, no file? That's in this, uh, this folder right here. Standard O, that's the CLive standard O. I'm not doing freestanding for that, I don't think. No, I'm not doing freestanding for this. I guess it doesn't find... <laughs> I need my include files as well as the system include files. So uh, that's not great. But it did make the other ones all right, I think. I'll check right here, make clean, and then try it. Yeah, it does not like that. Okay, but the other files were made, which is good. It really doesn't find... That's interesting. I have I've not had this happen before, so... Does Clang report the same thing, I wonder? Depends how they're getting their paths set up and everything. Clang has stack check fails. <laughs> so I would have to add in, um, add back in like no stack protection, no stack protector, protector. And I don't have wrapping on in this terminal, I guess. Let's. Put that down there. That should be a space in that. Let's do this. So no PIE and no stack protector. That should get rid of that. Yeah, it doesn't find standard IO. That's very interesting. 
I guess because I'm overriding the system includes when I do the dash big I. I just wanted that to be added to the system includes. Or I don't have a live C and it's relying on G live C and I'm on Alpine, which has muscle. Which hopefully is, is uh, not an issue, but maybe it is. Um, I can check. So let's just make directory. Uh, Test.c. And I could have done this faster. If I have something completely outside of that directory, is there still an issue, right? Because that's really lame if there is. But we'll uh, we'll find out. So yeah, no such file or directory. Interesting. Do I have to get like libc or something? I wouldn't think I would, but maybe maybe I do. I figure it would be with GCC, right? There's like a build base or something. This is me not knowing uh, Linux and everything. We could get muscle. Which I thought I had, but maybe I don't. Um, da, 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 let's do this. I don't have very much stuff on here, so I probably don't. That's really funny if I got GCC, but I didn't get a libc. That's really funny, actually. <laughs> I should have tested that out, right? Uh, okay. Uh, whatever. We'll get it. Okay. Wow, I can't find it. Okay, I'm going to have to set this up on my system and then get back to this. Okay, I got it. After a quick Google search, I just had to get libc-dev, which pulls in the right stuff automatically. I thought I got that earlier after getting some build packages, but that's not true. But, uh, okay. Well, stuff works. Is it a dot out? Yeah. So we're good. Okay. We should be able to uh, get that now. Hey, there we go. Now it builds, actually, once I have standard I.O. and everything included in the system. So if that was freestanding, I could have used it without ellipse. So that's good to know, I guess. Uh, these are for Clang specific. No caller saved registers and interrupt service routine functions. So it has some stuff there. Is that all of these? Am I going to scroll forever? Probably. Oh, here we go. Yeah, it looks like only those. Um, I have tested that before. Sometimes it can make things a little wacky. Uh, and I don't think GCC needs those specific errors. We can handle them if we want. I just want to make sure this works on both, you know. GCC doesn't complain. Uh, if we want to silence that for Clang, though, we can add in... Another warning here, warning suppression. I think that's no interrupt service routine, I believe. So if we do clang, yeah, it silences that specific warning. All right, that doesn't mean it'll boot, right? But doesn't, okay, so on FreeBSD or whatever, it had a space and here it just goes directly on. All right, nice issues I keep running into. End of line delimiter issues, that's always fun. All right, I didn't need to make that again, but. Sound hardware is invalid. Ooh, I don't even have sound hardware. PC speakers out of the question, that's very sad. I'm gonna have to find a new thing to do for that. Uh, find replacement alternative for sound hardware. I guess that was deprecated in some messages I'd seen before regardless, so that does make sense. VNC server. Okay, so I don't have like SDL or whatever that it needs for stuff as well. Okay. Got to know what packages you need to run, right? <laughs> I do not know. I have a QEMU page. That might work. That might work. I probably need these things. QEMU UI GTK. Oh, well, there we go. I should have just paid attention. I'll have to remove these packages later. That's all right. Why didn't I do that to begin with? Ah, there we go. 
and I get it in a floaty. I'd like it in like a smaller window, but that's all right. Uh, it does boot. I know this text is probably like really tiny. Sorry about that. I got a larger screen, but it does boot, so that's good. Uh, does it print stuff? Does it print stuff? It does print stuff. Okay. Does it use up a bunch of memory and not give it back? No? Okay. We got it to boot. That was actually easier than I thought. As long as you download the right stuff, that'll probably cut out of the video because that's not good. <laughs> But, uh, okay, sound hardware it doesn't work. I don't think I have the man pages because I need docs for that. I think it's just doc, right? Yeah. So we don't have sound hardware. Nope. Do you have sound card? Oh, PC speaker. PC speak audio device machine property. Audio device. I need a back end for that. Do I have to give it like a name? I don't know how to do that. I'll have to search how to set up audio devices. That's all right. It does boot though, like, so that's good. That's under Clang. Does it boot under GCC? Does not boot under GCC. Okay, well, I have had issues with that before. And I did fix that in my test because I showed that in the update video, right? So. I think I remember refactoring the disk reading code. But I could also check if it works with other optimization levels first, because I know this is dash OS. So I might just do zero optimization levels, right? And see. One, it'll be a lot faster, but two, see if it boots. It does not. Okay. Well, I know in file ops and reading and writing sectors, there were some things that I changed, right? There's some things that are probably not fully correct that I assumed was correct. Um, for instance, this was one thing, like, this isn't technically correct. I'm trying to get the lowest 15 bits of the starting sector. So this, you know, for one, needs extra parentheses. <laughs> right. But those are also errors that would be revealed if I turned on warnings. So I will do that. So let's do all an extra. And we'll read about 5,000 pages of errors now, but it'll boot. Well, it won't boot, but we'll get uh, more info about what may be wrong. So no interrupt service routine. Uh, GCC doesn't really care for that, but that's okay. Unused, so unused variables, they're just warnings though. Other than unused variables, what do we have? Comparison of signed. Integers is bad. That may be an issue somewhere. Unused int frame parameters. Variable set, but not used. That shouldn't really, these shouldn't really matter though. Array subscript is type character. That's probably not good. You don't want to subscript with only a string thing. Comparison of different sign this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder if there's a way to like group error messages by type. That would be nice. I know SQL, but this isn't SQL. SQL for error messages would be great, <laughs> but that's okay. These are just unused. No interrupt service. Yeah, that's fine. Control reaches end of non-void function. Parse summon products. That's in the calculator. Yeah, those aren't good either. Hmm. I might fix this first because that sounds bad. I don't think that's preventing it from booting, but that does sound bad. So byte is defined as a character and cursor bytes. Um, okay. Here, this, this number, which is bytes, which is an int 8t. Do I have that defined as character? That's probably bad. <laughs> Standard int. I do. That should be signed character. I'm surprised that didn't give more issues by now for, uh, for other things. Definitely should be signed character. Still doesn't boot though but definitely should be signed character. I could enable pedantic as well, but that'd be even more, even more issues. I'm trying to think what would keep it from, cause I know, I know there were issues specifically with booting and that I did not have values set when reading and writing to disk sectors. So I can try to confirm or deny that that's the case. And it was because the kernel wasn't loaded to memory, essentially. So if I go to where the kernel is supposed to be loaded to memory, 
you know, it should be put into um, some memory address here. I think it's 3000 in hex. And it should find the kernel from there, but I believe uh, that was not true. So I just want to see if my intuition is right. That stuff doesn't load because the kernel doesn't exist because it's not being loaded. We can check that by looking at whatever the scratch block address is, I guess. But I'll just put in a uh, thing here so I know I'm at this point. So scratch block address. So we can see the kernel should be loaded here, right? Or at least the root directory should be loaded here. So we can see if we get values there that we can then search for the kernel. And we'll see how that works. So this should be not doing anything really. And this text is supremely tiny, but I'm looking at values. EAX is dead beef. I could put monitor to standard IO. I might do that because then I could type in here and have it just be in the terminal. I might do that. EBX is 3000. So if we look at like instructions X slash 10 I at 3000, it's all zeros. So nothing's being loaded there. You, you should figure you'd see like characters at that location, but no, we're not getting anything. So, okay. Let me just make that a little easier to see. I think we can do monitor standard IO, I think is how you do that. I don't remember exactly. It might be equal standard IO. Now we have this here. Okay. So I go here. This is frozen, right? So it shouldn't be moving. So if I type info registers, we have everything. See, we have dead beef, and this is the address that the stuff is supposed to be loaded to. But if we look at that, like 10 instructions at that address, or we can even look at, uh, I think $EVX will work as well, yeah, for that data. So there's nothing there. And that's where our root directory is supposed to be at. So if we say, look at the characters at that address, we should have, you know, strings. And I don't have any strings. So I know that's not working. And that is in where we're doing read and write sectors. So that's why I figure... That's that's the issue there. So what I can do is sort of refactor read and write sectors a bit. I know I have the IO code in ports. I know I have these things, so I could abstract my C code by using out by it and in by it and out word and stuff. I can add word versions. I can do that. Let's do that. Let's add word versions here. Let's do write AX, because I'll need this for um, like reading and writing data down here, if I want to abstract it a little bit, like reading in or writing out words at a time. So that's why I'm going to do that here. So let's do out word 16 T value. We'll do out immediate 16 A out. Well, no, immediate. That would be the port. So this will be AX. Otherwise, out. DX AX. So we can do W. And this should be the value and this should be the port. I think that'll be all right still, hopefully. We can also put in word versions for this. I N W. Read in value from DX to AX and return AX. Instead of UNAT, this will be 16T. This will read in Word instead. Okay, just those two things there because I'll need those later, but I want to sort of make these look a little bit better. So since we have outbyte here, and I believe I have ports and I don't, let's include that as well. Portsio.h, so I can use these. We can write out two, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember the order. What is, what is out by? It's port and then value. Okay. So write out 2, 1, F6, the value, which is this stuff in A. So I'll just grab that. Another one there. Yeah. So we shift this over. We get those four bits. We or it with E0 to set the higher four bits. And we're sending that value there. Okay. I can do that for the rest of these as well. Do 
F2, the size and sectors. This does shorten up the code a little bit too, which I like. So it should look a little bit better over time. That's the goal here. And maybe this will reveal something that I'm doing wrong, that it's not loading the sectors correctly. That would be nice. But if anything, it's just refactors. Which are all right. Five, six, and seven. I mean, I could just uh, do that. I'm trying to think, how do I do this faster, right? We want these, one F4. That would be here. This is one F5. Uh, okay, I hit undo, but it went up there, which is not great. There we go. Uh, at least we're working with LBAs now. I should change this starting sector because we're during, we're, yeah, we are working with LBA values. So I might change that to say LBA. That would probably be better. Probably would be better. This would be one F7 for the command port, which we'll send the command to. Okay, so that does look a little nicer. I'm assuming it would be in the same order when it's compiled as these are all going to assembly volatile, you know, a little inline section of codes probably for in byte and out byte and in word and out word. So the other thing, I guess we can do this in byte here, reading in a value from a port, which would be 1F7. So I'm checking. I'm setting that to test byte, checking if the top bit is set. We could just do that directly as we're reading in. Because I'm doing while one, doing this, checking. So if the top bit is set, we want to wait till it's not set. So while it is set, I want to do nothing. Right? from status register. So that does shorten up the code as well. Full status port. Well, I'm already reading status port, so. While we read a byte and it has the top bit set, it should be there. Maybe that's being like optimized away somehow, even though we're supposed to be reading that every time, but that has assembly volatile in it, so that should be okay. Trying to think of potential issues here. Why would it not be loading actual sectors, right? Not exactly sure. This is string word, which works better. It could be due to this address as well. If I'm trying to send in or it's compiled or optimized to be the same, uh, the address works as a starting address that's supposed to be incremented each time we're gonna like read from it for EDI. So at the end of this, it should be address you know, plus 512 from 256 words. And maybe it's just putting the same value in every time, which is not good. <laughs> that would be bad. Of course, it was zero and nothing went in there. So something got like optimized away, I guess. I'm not sure. Uh, but we could replace that. We could say for, I'm already using I. I'll use 32, but that's fine. I'll just say for J. We want to read in the port. We're reading in from DX, so that's true. So we do in word from 1F0, the data port. We want to set something to that, like the address here. The address is a constant value, so what I could do is make that not constant. Um, 
changing things up a bit. I don't really want to use test byte either. I guess I'll leave that there. Uh, EDI will be 32 bit. But we're reading in words at a time. So let's do a 16 bit pointer. Could do address pointer or something. Equals UN16T pointer to address. And we could set the data at that value equal to the word that we read in, which is what we're doing ultimately 256 times. And at 16 bits, we could set it and then increment. That should be doing the same thing that this is doing. Of course, it's not in string word repeat, so it will be longer assembly if it's not optimized into this version, right? So a bit less performant, but should still be near instantaneous on our VM and a Kimu here. So we'll do read 256 words from data port into memory. That should be equivalent to what it was doing here. And just in case, the I values shouldn't matter for like namespacing and scoping or whatnot. But I'll just make these all different letters just in case they're overrunning each other somehow when it's being compiled. And this we're reading in a byte from 3F6. We're not doing anything with it, so that's fine. We can just do that. And this code looks easier to read and it's a lot shorter. Uh, we can do the same thing for writing, although right now I'm only testing reading. So I'm not sure that would matter, but uh, yeah. Unused variables and things aren't great. Probably messed up some things here. Conflicting types for in bytes. Have you want 16t? Unsigned shorts. I need word. Previous definition. Did I not call it in word? Probably not. I in. Call the same thing in byte. I did. All right. Yeah, that's why I have conflicting definitions because they would be conflicting there. Starting undeclared. Starting sector. Starting sector undeclared, which is where we're starting at. It's also the LBA number. Okay, that time at least compiled all the way and still doesn't work. Well, we might not be able to tell actually. Do we have anything? Oh, now we have something. Let's just print out 10 characters at EVX. Uh, we should have the dot, there we go. So now we have the dot and we should have the dot dot. It might be after this point. This is at 320. Let's print out 20 characters at 320, 3020. Yeah, we have the dot dot there as well. So I'm just trying to read like how far did we read in memory here. We got the third stage dot bin. The last thing in the root directory should be the kernel. So I'm trying to see if we got that far in the kernel. So we got the test font right there. Just to make sure we read everything in because the kernel I think is past one sector. So I can test if we read in more than one sector at this point, which we should have read in a block or eight sectors. So that's what I'm, I'm trying to test here. 31.12 is not right, should be 3200 kernel. Okay, so we see the kernel.bin there, which means that we should be okay. 3.2.2, because I think that's the last thing that's gonna be in there. We also have some extra data, which isn't great. So I think I'm overriding data and make disk or I'm not clearing everything out. because so we have extra stuff there. So that could be something I look at as well. Um, but yeah, that did look like it read it incorrectly at least. So I'm just exit out of that. Third stage, um, debugging that did read it in correctly, I think. So we can see if that actually boots now. I'll take care of some of these warnings. I just want to, hey, get to the actual thing. So for whatever reason in that assembly code, that I think I did the equivalent of, just rewrote it in C with some wrapper functions. Uh, that seemed to have fixed it for whatever reason. So I'm not going to complain. 
I just kind of don't understand some things sometimes, you know? <laughs> I don't know exactly why that, uh, that didn't work there, but sure. Uh, let me see if I'm overriding data, though, because that would be another thing. And yeah, I need to do that someday in the future. So where I'm writing data into, I guess, the data files. Because it wouldn't be the bitmaps. It would be where I'm writing the root directory, right? Am I writing the actual files in here? That would be in the data blocks, right? Yeah, because I'm writing the file names. So I wrote the file names. Writing the actual data. For this many files. Okay, so I'm copying the file name. But if there's already data within this, it won't fill it out. So if I have a file name like kernel.bin and I had another name, which is probably where the data is coming from, like calculator.bin, that's a longer name. And I'm not clearing this out. So if there's data past the end of a smaller name, we're still including that every time. So this, this could come up later and would be worse, right? If I'm reading like weird values from uh, reading directories. So it would be better to like nip this in the bud first, right? So let's... um. Let's do that. That didn't appear here because this name is longer. If the name was always longer at the same, th the same length, it wouldn't matter. But since some names may be shorter, there's extra data on the end. So let's do that. I'll just, I'll mem set it. Directory entry name. Let's mem set uh, zero or null. Size of directory entry dot name. I think I can do that. I don't remember. Directory entry T, that's probably within um, our file system thing here. This header. Name is 60. Okay, so it should say the size of that is 60. So just so it knows how much. So clear out name first. We'll do that. All right. And that should still boot. Hey, there we go. All right, I'll have to get a new font for that as well and increase the screen size so people can read it again. I'll probably do that in between this and the next uh, episode there, but that was some basic things here. Let's see, before I was testing with OS, let's see if the different optimization levels make a difference before I mess with like some of these errors and stuff here. Character size may be uninitialized. That would be bad as well. Uninitialized stuff. <laughs> Um, so that's not printing anything. It's not printing my character, but it is printing strings or uh, the command text. So if I do shut down, it prints. So this was another thing I ran into before as well. And it came down to um, how, how I'm doing standard IO stuff, right? So that was in here. So the reason I looked up these things before and I'm going through is so I don't spend three hours trying to debug live and it's it doesn't I don't know what I'm doing. The issue ultimately was not passing in the address properly because I know this isn't a good put character or put C function anyway. So but the address wasn't being sort of proliferated and if the address was being proliferated, there was no data in that address. So here character C is a value. So that's going to be on the stack. So it's taking like a local stack address and passing it on, which should be OK, but in some compile situations, it doesn't go through, like in GCC here. So what I'm going to do instead is sort of a cop out, but also make things simpler. I just put a print character and print string effectively. I'm just going to call print F <laughs> or the percent %s and percent %c, and I don't know. It just uh, it, it'll work. <laughs> it'll work. It's kind of a cop out, but if we do percent %c with c to print a character, and we do the same thing for a string then, um, you know, I have those cases covered within printf and they're very short. So maybe that's better or worse. I don't really know, but it, sh it should work. Unless we get an error here and it doesn't compile, but it did. So if I go here, you'll see it now prints the characters. Hey, it's magical. Although sometimes there was an issue with using extra memory. So I'm just going to do print mem a couple of times to see if... Um, because it does malloc, right, the string. So I just wanted to see if it allocated extra and had a memory leak, but we have the same amount of free or available blocks. So that does not look to be the case, which is good. I just kind of wanted to mess with some different optimization levels here. 
just to see if it still booted and printed out text and, and worked. So that's why I'm going through this right now, because sometimes different things change at different optimization levels. So as far as like errors handled or returned or anything, See, this uses, at 02, it uses extra memory than it didn't before because the files are bigger, I'm assuming. But I want to make sure that's not a sign of a memory leak, and this time it is. It's using more memory every time. So that could be an issue with malloc or something that I'm not handling or, or doing correctly. Uh, we can try dash 03. But I'm glad it boots with all of these. I mean, not it's not the best thing, but... It boots with everything, and it only has a memory leak on Dash02, which is interesting. Uh, we can try Clang as well for these. See if it has any blocking errors that prevent from compiling. It doesn't look like it. Okay, so that's good. That's a Dash03. We'll try Dash02. So beforehand, it would not work on all optimization levels, so that's an improvement. And it wouldn't work on Clang and GCC. So I count these things as improvements. They're probably boring or not seeming to matter. It's like, why are you going through this so granularly? Uh, well, I don't know. <laughs> it's because I wanted to work for more people under more situations, right? And if it turned out it was just a very simple issue with reading and writing sectors, then that's, you know, I want to know these things. But uh, for the purposes of compiling, I'm probably going to leave things at 0 or just not include optimizations because it will be a lot faster and I'll have faster iteration time. But you can always mess with those and I can mess with them uh, off camera and stuff as well to try and suss out more, uh, more issues, right? So unrecognized command line options only for GCC for that. But okay, some other things are unused. So I might go through with those or... Um, Let's do this and we'll just look at what we got going on here. So remove cursor, I have unused variables, so I can go through and remove things. And it's storming outside <laughs> if stuff gets loud. 203 lines for errors, that's not too bad. Because those are multiple lines per error, so. Um, so before I mess with those, I'm gonna change the other code just to match and read write sectors and file ops. I just kind of want it to match writing as I do with reading to kind of simplify the whole thing and deduplicate possibly, because I'm doing the same code here, right? This stuff, this is the same code. So I can test that again, wait until the busy bit is clear. Because if it's not clear, we'll break, yeah. And this is different, the SAS register is the same, however, Cache flush command, then we're waiting until the busy bit's clear again. So I can just get rid of that and that. 1F7, reading it, yes, okay. So that makes, you know, less lines of code's always good. This is sending a byte out to 1F7 and it's sending E7. So that's just a lot, a lot less code to read, which is nice. Abstractions are your friend. And for other architectures that need assembly specific things, we can just replace the code within this function and not, you know, in 20 different places in this file. So it also helps there. What am I doing here? I'm writing 256 words. So we can try that. J less 256, J plus plus. I'm assuming Having this comparison here would be enough of a delay, because here I have I have to have some small delay. I'm hoping on hardware this doesn't mess with it too much, and that we have enough of a delay checking this at the end of every loop iteration, instead of doing you know the full assembly code like this. We'll see. Um, or I guess I'll check on the laptop sometime, but I might have broken everything on actual hardware by doing this. We'll see. But okay, we have the address, or in this case I have the address pointer. So what I can do is read or write to that and iterate every time. But this time I'm writing to memory, right? Or what am I doing? I'm reading into memory here. This time I'm writing to the data port. I would be sending out word to the port 
which would be 1F0, the 16 bits of data from the address, and then I'll increment the data after to get the next 16 bits because of pointer arithmetic. So write 256 words from memory to data port. And that turns one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, about seven lines into three or two. That's not bad. That's assuming writing works as well. I haven't tested saving files, but that should be the you know equivalent to this stuff here. And really what the only thing I'm doing different in these two if else's other than the cache flush is just this stuff right here. So I could even do that and abstract it out from the command, but I guess I'll leave the commands here for now. That's not too bad. That's simpler. And it still compiles and it still boots and we still got stuff here. Okay. So let's do this again, errors.txt, and we'll just look at that. So remove cursor has unused variables. I don't know if I want to go through all of these, but I might. We'll see if it doesn't take too long. Um, really, I could just say, you know, what are the first two lines that I need to worry about? And just go from there, from calculator. So this will be pretty boring, you know, for the rest of this. I'm just going to go through and probably fix errors to clean those up and maybe have it compile a little better, use less space, you know, stuff like that. If these are messing with other things. so. You know, feel free to stop watching now, right? I'm not going to do any other exciting things here. It'd be, eh, it'd be fairly boring. More so than usual, at least. So character size and font character, and both in remove cursor, I guess, yeah, are unused. That's probably true. It's in move cursor. It's not in remove. Okay. Font character as well is not in there. Okay. So we'll just do that. We'll say, let's have 20, or is it dash n20? I never remember. Um, I don't have docs for stuff. Nice. Dash n, okay. So control reaches end of non-void function and calculator. That could be bad down the line, trying to use that. So we'll try that. 117, 138, parse sum and product. 117, yes. Well, it should return, though. While true, it's going to return everything eventually. So I, I guess if it reaches here, it shouldn't reach here, so we'll just return error. Or I could put unreachable, right? But should be unreachable, I would think, because it's while true. If it's not a plus or a minus, it'll return so I don't know why it says that really, but okay, whatever, that's fine. Maybe there's some weird, weird situation that that would happen in. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Read write sectors. Ooh, unused variable test byte. Yes, I did just get rid of that. We don't need test byte anymore. Hey, that's an extra thing we're not using. That's that's good. Delete file, starting sector is set but not used. File size is set but not used. Delete file. Starting sector is set but not used. So I set it to file pointer 14, but I don't do anything with it. So what do I actually need? Do I need the file size there? I need the file table size and sector, but I'm not using these values because I'm just removing it from the file table and writing the changed version of the file table to the disk. So I'm really not using either of these, which is what it said. So, okay, I'll get rid of those then. <laughs> we're, not, we're not using them. And I'm not using that anymore either. I'll try that. Save file, unused variable, return code. Okay. Unuse. So I'm not using this. Oh, because I'm not returning it. Uh, okay. Save file. Well, it equals zero to start off with, right? Else file exists, and I'm not handling that case. Um, oh, because I'm returning a one. I mean, I could just return one as well. 
And it doesn't matter. We could set return code equal to one. And then return return code, and that'll be all right. That'll get rid of that. Print file table. Unused variable blanks num. Okay. Well, it's not used. I'll get rid of it then. Um, what else do we have? New recurrent string, editor main, unused variable. Oh, yeah. Because we just load up files now according to what's passed in on the command line. That makes sense. Also, unused variable index and other signed expression issues. Okay, new or current. We're not using that. Okay, are we using choose file type? We are. If they didn't pass anything in, it's new. That's not assumed. So I had an index variable. That's not being used. That's true. Okay. Of integer expression issues. I mean, how big is the file? 115 lines and make file. I'm using GCC. So what, let's look at it for uh, for Clang, right? What what errors do I have for for Clang? 76, even less. So right, we'll just we'll just keep going because each error is multiple lines. There's really not that many. Lang says I have unused variables anyway. So let's just see, right? Um, I wanted to do this. Just get the first few. First of int integer expressions, different sign as int and uint32, unsigned int. Int and unsigned at 599. So cursor x. So what is cursor x is a uint 16. And line length is a uint 32. So we could just make this a uint 32. I mean, I could do this. uint 32 t cursor x plus 1 is less than line length. Would that work? Um, yeah, that's after 599. So yeah, that would work. Okay, so we'll cast it larger. That's fine. So 651 and 695 have similar issues. 651. Eventually, I'll change these to be UN32s. They don't need to be 16-bit anymore. But that's all right. Was it 699? That's like down here. Yep. Okay. Or 695. That's fine. What else did we have? Choose file message defined but not used. File to load. Yes, because if we're passing in a file, I'm not loading one. So that does make sense. That's true. 63. Not using that anymore. Let's just see where we're at now. Yeah, 100. Okay, yeah, so that's not bad. Unused variable ext in third stage. And previous set, but not used in malloc. It's interesting, like, the order in which it determines these things as well. Sometimes it compiles another file before another. It's kind of interesting. I don't think they're deterministic there. Uh, but yeah, we're not using ext in here anymore. No extensions needed, which is nice. And this is a decent way of looking at errors. It's not great, you know. I like some color, I guess, but at least I know usually would see the earlier areas of the earlier errors affect later ones. So sometimes you can knock out a whole block by just getting the first one in the list. So that's also why I'm reading from the head and not the tail. Uh, but yeah. But yeah, so malloc previous is set but not used. That could be an issue if something's overriding things. That could cause bugs later. So I'm not using previous where, oh, here. Three blocks. I set it, but I'm not, oh, I'm just checking while there's a next block. Okay, that's true. I'm not using previous here. I'm just checking current and next if they're free. So that would prevent some things. Here we're checking the next block as well, the same thing. Okay, so I don't need to mess with them. That's fair. 
Okay. So default exception handler, unused, int frame 32. Default exception handler, IDT, okay. And default exception handler error code. So that's true, I mean, I'm not using them. So in frame 32, I have this stuff on the stack. So I could like print out what the flags are maybe if that would say something or, I mean, I could print out like this info instead of just saying something went wrong <laughs> in an attempt to use, you know, the stuff here. I mean, I could see what the instruction pointer and CS are linked to as well. Not that that would affect things or flags, or the stack, um, it depends. Or, you know, we can just say, we're not gonna use it, and we'll deal with it later. <laughs> oh, which is not great, but that's what I'm doing. Not great. But that's what I'll do. Uh, okay, so kernel and default int handler and interrupt code. We're still using unused parameter. Okay, so default interrupt handler also and page handler also. That's inside of IDT still and exceptions. And that's true in here. Not the best way to do that. All right. So that's also in, in the pick thing and in exceptions default page handler. Page fault handler. So divide by zero, I am using it, right? Yeah, I'm using frame here. But the page fault handler, I'm not. Thought we're using the error, oh, we're not using frame. Okay, we are using the error code though, but all right. I mean, this is also a thing that if I notice this later, I'll be like, wow, I should be using this for something, so. <laughs> I might print out more, more info later for these. Uh, and the timer handler. Unused parameter frame and the keyboard IRQ1 not using E1. So yeah, the timer interrupt I'm not, that's true. I mean, I could also, I was gonna say, I could also have this taken void. It's just that I think the GCC, at least, if not the Clang manuals, state that the function signature should look exactly like this, right? Take an interrupt here for the attribute and have the thing on the stack here explicitly. So it knows what to do when it's generating prologue and epilogue code for this, we'll say, for iret and all. iret and all that stuff, it knows what's on the stack. So I don't wanna like replace this with void and not take in anything. I mean, I don't want to do this, right? This is just saying this is a cop out, but <laughs> I don't know. I don't have a good thing to do right now. E1 is not being used, that's true. That was for other extended key code combinations <laughs> that I'll need to handle later if I want it to be sort of up to spec, but that's true, we won't be uh, doing those. So we'll see this. We get into the bottom of the list, 57, almost, almost. And keyboard IRQ1 again. What do we have in there? Unused parameter frame and CMOS, okay. So let's take this and go to here. And go to here. I'm just putting it at the start. And that's it, okay. Here's some integer expressions of different signness and terminal, okay. U 32 and int w sign compare. So plus plus y at 136 and 96. 136 plus plus y. So what is y defined as? 16 bit probably. I don't have it defined. Oh, here I go. 32. So graphics mode x resolution or y resolution rather. Or font H. Okay, what is font H? Is that where it's coming from? That's uint 8. So maybe it's in graphics. 
X resolution was down here somewhere. X resolution. That's a 16. Okay, so that's 16 bit. Because that's just what the info is. But I make the limits I'm having be 32, I guess because it fits in cache and register values better. Okay, that's that's okay. I'll just be explicit with it. I'll say that this value here over one is going to be 32 bits. That's fine. I can do that. 196 as well. That is fine. Fine and dandy. Okay. That looked like it got rid of it, so in terminal right as well. Unused variable Y limit. Okay. And unused parameter frame. Unused variable Y limit. Really? It is. Am I using X limit? Yes. I'm not checking the Y limit. But I am checking X. If we're at the end of the line. I guess because it would just scroll naturally on the screen. It probably won't, though. Well, I'm checking here. I'm checking here. Is this not the same? Is that the same? <laughs> My duplicating code again. Y resolution divided by font H. Y resolution divided by font H. So I should be using Y limit here because Y limit is 32 bit anyway. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I can replace all of this with Y limit minus one. Aha. There we go. Then we're at the bottom of the screen. That doesn't affect the other things, I don't think. I don't have that happening again, just that one place. Just that one place, yeah, because then we activate scrolling, okay. So there we go, we're using Y limit now, calm down. Then we have syscall dispatcher, unused parameter frame. I can't use that because it's inline assembly though, right? But it doesn't have the interrupt attribute anymore, so the stuff might be on the stack, I'm just not explicitly stating to the compiler that it's going to be on the stack, but it will be in practice because of how x86 works and how the emulation will go. But I think that'll be okay. Like I could put void, or I could leave this here. Like this, this should not allow me to do this because this is not an inline assembly line, right? Although I guess it did allow me to do that, which is not uh, good. <laughs> but it's not an interrupt anymore, technically, even though it is an interrupt, so I'm just gonna replace this stuff with void, because I'm not using it anyway. Um, so yeah, we don't need the errors file anymore, because we only have so many here, so that's not bad. Unused parameter beats per measure, and PC speaker. That's true, I don't think I'm using that. Yeah, use it later. <laughs> well, well, if we do more complex things later, we'll use it at that time. Okay. Unused variable, allocated address, needed blocks, sector not found, not found string. All these are in the kernel. Uh, all those are in the kernel. I have another one? Nope. Okay, so allocated address, no, I'm not using that. Am I using pages? I'm using pages, I'm not using blocks. I guess I don't need blocks anymore because I'm loading two pages. I am allocating pages and allocating pages behind the scenes that does allocate blocks per pages. I guess I'm just not using that in here anymore, even though before I was. So that makes sense. Yeah. So I changed it only need pages. Okay. Allocated address is interesting, but I guess I don't need that anymore. Do I have anything that says allocated? Um, like when I jump to it, the entry point here, I did used to need an allocated address. But I guess I don't anymore because I'm putting it all at a specific address and that's the entry point. 
So I'm jumping only to that entry point. So I don't need the allocated address anymore. That was just before. Okay. That makes sense. As far as I understand it. Sector not found. So these strings are not being found. Well, they're not being used. Which is interesting. Because I'm just loading stuff to pages now. I'm trying to think. Um, I'm loading the file, right? Am I not? Am I not? I am here. That would be where those come into play. And I'm printing the program is not loaded. Or if, if it's a binary. I mean, I could print program or file not loaded, I guess. Um, or we're printing it out. So we would have found the sector or whatever by that point. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. We are printing program found but not loaded. But it could be a file at that point. So I'll say program or file. Yeah, we'll just do that. Found but not loaded. Try again. But sector not found. We're not doing not found string. Well, this is the same thing as what that was anyway. So, okay. We have Windows message. I'm going to keep that. We'll use that somewhere. I'm not getting rid of the Windows message. Something went wrong. Sad face. I'm not getting rid of that. <laughs> File size we're not using. Um, I was going to use it later. Okay. 512. Do we have the file size at this point? I guess we don't because I'm moving to the new file system, right? And that would be read from, uh, what did I call them, extents <laughs> in the inodes. And that would have the length and blocks, which we would change and load and read from there. And I might even change to use like a read syscall instead of doing all this anyway, so it'd be abstracted. Uh, but that's true. We're not using a file size. That's true. So I'll get rid of that. File text is not being used as a pointer or command editor. I guess, yeah, because if we type in a program, we're loading the program. We won't be doing a specific one just for this. That makes sense. That's more generic now. We don't need that. And file text. File text was just something to check if the extension for the thing we were loading was .txt or not. And we can check that better by just checking the name and the directory entry if it ends in .txt or what have you, if we want to go off that. Uh, but currently, right now in the program, I'm loading a bin file. I'm only checking if it's binary, and if not, I'm assuming a text file and reading it. But we don't need file text regardless, as a, an explicit extension down here that we were uh, checking for. We don't need that anymore. So, okay. And I get no more errors there. Does it still boot? The ultimate test. Um, I will look at getting a larger font and setting the size bigger than 1080p by 30, just because I have the larger screen now, right? Uh, so, yeah, I know this is hard or, or impossible to read. Apologies for that. Just checking if I have a, a final mem leak, and I don't. But I'll get a, a larger bitmap font, maybe like size. Right now it's 10 by 18. So I could check it with larger sizes. It should work. Maybe I'll try like 20 by 36 or something. You know, like what, what do I have here um, for my terminal that I have set right now? I have deja vu. I have 34. So I could look for like a 34 size font and that would be comparable to what I have now in the terminal. So that might be, you know, well, I'll look at large bitmap fonts or something. Uh, Clang, I'll just check a final thing here. If it has different errors, it doesn't which is nice, and it still boots, and we have stuff working. I mean, as far as now, it, it doesn't do everything it did before. It doesn't load programs or stuff, right? <laughs> or go through any file system, so I still have to set every, every all of that up. There could be other errors, you know, in the system that just aren't being called right now, for example, or logic errors or other things. But we got it to compile, which it never did before, which I think is interesting. I could try the LLD linker as well. And it looks like that works comparatively. So that's good. Just for a, a change there, it doesn't really matter. But should work, work the same or similarly to GNU. I do have this no text. I don't think I need this dash Z no text anymore for um, text section relocation, I think is what that was being used for. 
So there's that. I know on Windows, if you do this, the linker, as far as setting it's i386 PE, you'll have to do, but I don't think it directly supports O format binary for PE files. You might need to add in another line to do object copy and take like whatever output of this line is without O format binary and, you know, change it into a binary here. So, you know, out dot temp to bin or something. So you might need to do that on Windows. I might either add a check for Windows or Unix within this make file, Windows or Linux, or um, just put that in here, like the object copy stuff. I'll have to test with that off screen a little bit to see if it works the same, because I don't want there to be too many or any changes ultimately. I want to be able to develop this, you know, within whatever environment using GCC or Clang and either one of their linkers and not have any extra issues, right? Ideally, <laughs> it's probably not always the case that's going to happen, but ideally, that's uh, what would happen. But for now, it compiles on GCC and Clang, which is what I wanted to do to slightly not quite get back into OS Dev. So I'll get a larger font and set that up, which is just loading the different font within the third stage, right? Where I load, um, I forget what it was, U18N. Yeah, term U18N. I'm using 18 font, 18 point uh, terminus font, I think is what this is, or equivalent enough. I'll maybe double the size of that, right? Let's <laughs> see if I can find one of those. Other than that, uh, yeah. The next video will be <laughs> doing the syscalls, I promise. And the open file table and inode table. So I'll have like a struct inside of the file system thing here. I'll just add another like type this struct down here for an open file table. Just get rid of these things here. You know, open... I don't know, file table entry T, maybe a little shorter, we'll see. But it'll have, um, I don't know, stuff that we need to have a file be open <laughs> that we can use in an open syscall to put an entry into this file table. We'll like have an array, maybe malloc an array in the kernel at runtime, right? For however many files, you know, maybe however many of these entries fits within a page, we'll malloc a page or something. I don't know. But we'll have like a, an FD, right? We'll have the FDs return to a program that calls the syscall for open. This FD number will just be the index into an array of these file table entries. So we'll have an array of structs, and the index of that struct in the array, the first one open, will be FD. And traditionally, I think that's three, because zero, one, and two are standard in, out, and error. Not in that order, but <laughs> standard in, standard error. Uh, yeah, no, that's right. Standard in, out, and error is zero, one, two, yeah. Um, so the, the closest FD you'll get to zero would be three, usually. That might be different on mine, depending how I set it up. I might just reserve zero, one, and two and deal with that later, because I don't have streams or anything, or even a file system. Uh, but yeah, that'd be the FD number. We'll have like an address where the file is loaded in memory. We'll read it with read-write sectors to memory, and the address it's read into after allocating a page by default for a file, or however big it is, um, from the file system. If we open a new file, it'll be zero, right? We'll just allocate a page for it, or maybe even zero until it's used, lazily allocate, maybe, probably not. Um, but if it's a file that exists, and say it's like 20K, and that's like five pages, right? We'll get that data from the inode for that file, from the X tense in the inode, and we'll load it to this address, right? We'll load it to an address with enough space for five pages, and that address returned from allocate pages will be what's in this file table entry. We'll also have an offset to the file so that if you call seek, right, or change wherever the position is from reading or writing, we'll have a sort of pointer to that position in the file, which this offset, or maybe even just a pointer, will be pointing somewhere into memory from this address. This address will be like the base of the file, base address, and the offset will be like the actual position in the file. So if we call seek to seek start, we'll just have it equal the address seek end would be address plus the length of the file, assuming it's contiguous in memory, which it's virtual memory now, so it should be. And f seek or the seek syscall, I think it's l seek, but whatever, that will affect this offset value. So we can, you know, calculate positions and do reading and writing. It, it'll make more sense when it's more visual and I have this laid out. This is just what I'm thinking so far. We might also have an inode pointer, a pointer to a position or an array index within an inode table that I will also set up. 
So like the current open inodes maybe, or just all the inodes on disk, I don't know. Maybe just the current open files, the inodes for those will be in a table or an array in memory, an array of structs of inodes, um, or at least some data to relate to an inode. And then the file table entry in the open file table, that array index, that array that struct in the array will point to the inode. And yeah, so this will be used for things like open and close. So we can also have, let's say like a reference count. I don't know if this will be in the file table or the inode table or what, probably just the inode table, but we'll have a reference count somewhere that says this many things have this file open and we're not gonna close it until everything's closed. Or if we call delete, it won't actually delete the file until it has no references left and stuff like that. Um, maybe for the open file table, we won't have that. We'll probably have flags, which will be like the O flags, O create, you know, read only, write, all the, you know, these things. Those will be attached to the file table entry. But this may be it, right? The file descriptor, the address, an offset into that address, into memory, uh, a pointer to the file's underlying inode and data subsequently and um, the flags that it was opened with. And then, you know, we can implement open that kind of manipulates those values in the open file table entry in the open file table array. And we can have close, which will update a reference count somewhere. And uh, yeah, if it's all the way closed and, and we don't have any references anymore, the reference count is zero, we can remove or free up the entry within the open file table. I think is what I want to do with that. Yeah, and then open will increase the reference count and set these things up. If you call open for the same file multiple times, it will create new entries at the next available index in the file table in the array of open files, yeah. So if you call open like two times for the same file, we'll have two entries with different values, right? That's just how it works. But the underlying data uh, outside of memory won't be updated until you actually like write to the file, but you can have different positions open within the file, <laughs> assuming it hasn't been updated and written to. Um, they'd be overlapping potentially, but anyway. So I know that was a lot of, you know, whatever data that doesn't matter right now because it's not implemented, but that's what I'm thinking what I'll do on the next video for this where I actually do stuff. This one was just getting back into a, I don't know, dealing with errors, <laughs> getting it to compile. Because I had people that wanted it under GCC, and if they didn't, well, I wanted it to work under more things. So all extra. Uh, for Shiggles, we can see what's under Pedantic. I'm not going to do anything with it, but we have some issues, not very many, actually. The slash E is not an escape sequence, uh, and that seems to be the majority of these. I can't pass between a function pointer and a void pointer. That's really lame. But uh, I'm going to deal with that and just accept it. Void pointer in arithmetic is not good, so I might fix that. Uh, but if it works right now, I'm not, gonna, not going to worry about it. Uh, <laughs> I could replace these with 27, right? 033, because that's 8 times 3 plus 3, which is 27. 8 times 3 plus 3. And uh, hex 1b, which is, yeah, 16 plus... 11, yeah, so it is 27 for the escape. Um, I might fix that on the next one. Maybe, but this video has gone on long enough, so if I don't need this right now, I'm not going to mess with it because it works without the pedantic flag. <laughs> uh, but I should fix pointer arithmetic, even though it's counted as one for void. But anyway, I might do that on the next one. Right now, I'm going to say I'm done. And the video's gone on long enough, so thank you for watching. If you did, if you didn't, that's fine too. It's boring, like I said, fixing errors. But yeah, I'll get to, and I'll make the open file table, probably I know table, open and close this calls, try to get something work in there. Maybe implement seek just to mess with the offset and then leave read and write to like the one after next, we'll say. Or maybe do them all if it doesn't take too long, <laughs> which it probably will because it's me, right? And then F close, open, read, write, seek would be on top of that would be abstractions with a file pointer in standard IO and stuff. But that'll be on the next or next couple episodes. So yeah, thanks for watching. Do appreciate it. Hopefully sound and lighting and uh, code readability as far as being bigger on screens better now. But if you have any suggestions, you know, 
feel free to make them. I'll, I'll look at them, take them into consideration. So I'll try to get a bigger font. I'll try to fix this PC speaker thing. And yeah, see you then. So thanks. Well, cheers.